Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of On The Mic with Michael Flicks. Very happy to be back. Took a couple weeks off, man. Uh, I told y'all the Flicks Media Network. I started the Flicks Media Network not too long ago. And I've been busy with projects, man. So the last the last few uh, Saturdays when I typically record, I haven't had the free time to come up here and like invite guests up here and do On The Mic because I'm getting busy. The network is growing, which is a good thing. But I'm happy to be back in here, man. I got a, I got a special guest in here with me today, man. This guy's... Uh, been going crazy lately, man. Dunking on people, playing well, offers coming out of nowhere. This guy's got a lot of things going on, man. I'm happy to have you here, my guy, Otto Alonzo. Usually I shake hands, but we got the plexiglass up now. So how, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm, I, like I said, I'm excited to have you here, man. I've been, uh, of course, I've been following you on social media for a long time. You've been playing on one of the best teams in in town for a while now. Um, so I've known who you are. I don't think I've up until up until today. I don't think I'd ever met you. Filmed a few of your games for sure. But I don't think I had ever met you before, man. So I'm glad to have you on the show, man. Oh, thanks. For thanks. sure. What you been up to, man? Oh, uh, nothing really. Just working out a ton. Just mm -hmm. a ton of working out. That's really it. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, how's it been? Cause I tip right now. It would be like it would be pretty much CIF playoffs right now. If it was a typical year, right? Yeah. Like getting yeah, ready for it. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So how's it been? Uh, what have you been up to? I mean, not, obviously not playing high school ball, but aside aside of working out, what you been up to? Like, uh, like. I know for at least me, like I, I joined a prep school in Veritas, just but like just keeping my eligibility at Tory, uh, and I've been like doing the grind session stuff a lot recently, mm -hmm. and that's been helping me so much. It's it's crazy. The grind session is incredible. You said Veritas? Yeah, Veritas prep. I think uh, like Malik Thomas, he's going to USC. He's a four star going to USC. Okay. And there's a kid going to Cal Poly, Daniel, and then Melo Sanchez also. Where's that school at? Uh, it's up like towards LA, like, okay. sort of like Santa Fe Springs. How did you find that school? Or uh, did you already know about it? They, they reached out to me at the beginning of COVID because mm -hmm. they wanted me to go and just straight into their prep program. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, now that like CIFL has some weird eligibility thing, I'm able to play with them as just like a club team sort of in the grind mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. So are, are you like you doing schoolwork from Veritas or? I do I do schoolwork from Tory. I do all my stuff still at Tory, so I can still play at Tory next year. And if CIF happens this year, this year. Right. Okay. So you're you're a junior right now. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I thought you were okay. I thought you were a senior. Uh, you you played at Tory last year, correct? Yeah. How did uh, what were your numbers like last year as a sophomore? Like I had like five five, mm -hmm. like one block a game. It, it was it was a big step for me at least, coming from like a small town in Colorado and coming mm -hmm. into like a big city in like San Diego for basketball. Mm -hmm. And it's uh it was sort of like just like a big switch compared to playing like some like five ten, random kids from the middle of nowhere to uh. Like uh, uh, like Dylan Wilhite or like Obina, like big kids that are mm -hmm. going some places. Mm -hmm. What was it? Uh, what, was it in like a, a culture shock? I've I've spent a little bit of time in um, I think Aurora, Colorado. Yeah. My, my 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 godmother moved there, so I spent like a week there. But that was like as a kid, and I know it's way different than San Diego. So how was it? Like was it any type of culture shock? Did you have to get used to it? What was it like? Yeah, my my hometown had less people than it does at Tory. So like wow. So I <laughs> I knew everybody's last name, middle name, first name at my old school, uh -huh. and then coming to Tory, like there was forty kids in one of my classes, and there was forty kids in like a class, like my entire freshman class at my old high school. Wow. Yeah, it was that was that was the biggest like switch for me at least. I can only imagine it's it's the number thing is the same, but it's not as far as like like switching like areas or whatever. But um, I, I live in Escondido. One of my old neighbors that lived upstairs, she went to a school in Escondido called uh, Ascension. Shout out to Kayla, she got her own massage, got therapy, and everything going on right now. I'm uh, doing big things out in Boston, but she went to a, a, a Christian school, a small Christian school in Escondido called uh, Ascension. Um, all from elementary and middle school, and in high school she went to our high school, Orange Glen. And it was the same thing for her. I remember like watching her, I think I was a junior her freshman year. And I remember just watching her like walk around and look at everything. She was like, it's like I'm at Ma Magic Mountain. There's so many people here, you know what I mean? She was like, she said pretty much the exact same thing. Like there's more people in like my, like I think her eighth grade graduating class had like six people. <laughs> and so to go from like six people graduating with her to thousands on campus, it was a big change for her. So I was just curious about that. So you, uh, were you were you playing varsity in Colorado before you moved out here? Yeah, I was playing varsity. It was my like, first year really playing basketball so it was like a, it was that was the weird thing mm -hmm. I was just super athletic my freshman year of high school and like when you're able to dunk in Colorado you just get put on the varsity team <laughs> I barely knew how to play basketball so that was like that was a big that was a big thing for me at least uh -huh. and so you're how tall are you six nine yeah I'm right around six nine yeah and so in Colorado in, in Colorado and playing basketball out there was it where were you just like in the post like just the big man or were they already working on skill work out there with you or what oh uh, just because I didn't know how to play the sport, they just put me in the post. I just set a lot of screens and I just pray I get a fast break dunk every once in a while. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, that's that's that was really like the big switch here. Like towards the summer, I didn't know I was even gonna go to Tory. Like I contemplated it a little bit, but I thought I was gonna stay in my old hometown. So like I tried to start like working on stuff because Colorado, like Gatorade Player of the Year, was always like a thing that I was trying to achieve in any sport. And so I started working really hard on that. And then my mom made the move to San Diego, and I was like, I'll just come with you. And mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to Bishops first. Still and then, school. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I went to Tory instead. Okay. What was what was the reason for that? Why didn't you go to Bishop? So Bishops, I was gonna go there because my stepdad's like stepchildren, they went there, and I was like, oh, so like I'll just leave you like the next person in there. Mm -hmm. And then like Tory came around, I like nobody recruited me or anything, but I just I went to like tour the school because it's really close to my house. When I want to go tour, I was like, this school is sick. Like, yeah. That's that's dope. And I saw Brandon Angel walking around campus, and uh -huh. I went to I went to a basketball game mm -hmm. like late at night, and I. I saw just a bunch of like just superstar basketball players. I was like, oh, this is the place to go. Right, 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 right. And for me, um, I have been seeing because yeah, I mean, if you if you follow basketball, and you live in San Diego, you know about the Torrey Pines tournament, obviously. And I had never been as a as a player myself. Like I said, I played at Orange Glen, and our team never played in that tournament. And then even as a fan, I had never been before. And only um, since becoming a cameraman, like filming games and getting booked to go, I like, oh, this, this tournament is crazy. I, like you see, Kyrie Irving had a record there. You see, like all these like future NBA players have played in that tournament, so you know it's a big deal. But it's one thing to watch it on TV than to like be in there in the packed gym with all these teams from all over the country. And like it's a, it's really dope to be at a, at Torrey Pines for that tournament. Anyways, I can only imagine like you walking in and seeing that gym and seeing the whole campus. I like, man, it's dope. Is I wanna I wanna backtrack a little bit though. You said um, you didn't know how to play the sport. You're just a big kid and they just put you in the post. But then you also said you wanted to be Gatorade Player of the Year in any sport. So what sport were you playing before basketball? Uh, I played soccer for 12 years. Wow, okay. I was I was a really good soccer player. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really what my first love really was. My dad, like, he, he was like, you have to play one sport. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was like, okay, soccer. Like, that was just the first thing that was readily available to me. And were you not playing a sport? And he said you need to pick a sport, or were you like, when you say he can, you can only play one sport? No, no, he was like, just pick a sport. Okay, okay. And I, it was like that, and I couldn't play football. I love football, but I couldn't play it because I was like, I don't want you to get head injuries. Gotcha. That's always the first thing. Gotcha. So I was like, soccer, like that's like the first thing. And like, it, it just like grew from there. And I quit playing in like eighth grade because I just got way too big for it. Okay, I, that was gonna be my next question. Like how was it? Cause I mean, you're 6'9". I imagine a 6'9 kid has always been like the biggest kid around or in your class or on your team or whatever. So I was, just, I was gonna ask like, how was it being like this super tall guy playing soccer? What is it? Yeah, growing, like, growing up, I was always like a big kid. Like right. that's, that was the first thing. But like I was like 6'3 in eighth grade, right? So I was like a normal height. Mm -hmm. And going into my freshman year of high school, I went from 6'3 to 6'7. And so that was just like a big like wow. switch in height. And I was like, I, I can barely walk anymore. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I struggled with that. Like I would trip on my own feet all the time. So I was like, I don't think soccer is the right thing for me anymore. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I, I was gonna ask that next to them. I was actually just telling my mom, I'm a Lakers fan. I was just telling my mom about Anthony Davis. They put the picture of him up there with, with the goggles on him playing point guard. And I literally, before they put that picture up there, I was just telling my mom, I'm like, mom, he's seven foot, but like he grew like seven inches in the summer. He used to be a point guard. So it's funny that like I'm telling her that story and I got you sitting in front of me. It pretty much happened to you the same way. And you said it was like it was like difficult for you to control your body for sure. Yeah, it was it was just weird trying to like get used to it. Like when you walk around first after growing like a ton, like I didn't really do anything during my summer. Like I would just play video games all day. So I was barely walking anyways. Mm -hmm. But like walking around campus for like the first time in high school, I would trip on my feet. Like I remember one time I had my books out and I just tripped on my feet and I dropped it like the classic high school scene. Like it was <laughs> it was just really just me. Being, I, I felt like the nerd at the school for a, for a little bit, just not knowing how to walk. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. So you get to San Diego, you could have went to Bishops, you picked Torrey Pines and then how was it like, I'm sorry, you watched the game, you picked Torrey Pines and all that. How was it um, like meeting the coach? Um, was it like you went straight to varsity because you were big or like how, how was that all experience? Or uh, what was that experience like I should say? Uh, just, uh, I, I, I contacted Nick Herman because like, I knew he went to Torrey. I heard his entire like story mm -hmm. uh, before like I even knew of Torrey. Like I, that, that was just something that blew up on my Twitter one day. Okay. I saw that and I reached out to him. I was like, I'm about to go to Torrey. Like who should I contact? And he was like, nobody, just come here on August 5th. So I move August 4th to San Diego. Next day, I go straight to this practice. And this is what year? This is, la this is last year. 20, so this is, yeah, 2020? Yeah, okay. going into or 2019. Going, 2019. Oh, this gotcha, is like gotcha. going into that summer. Gotcha. And like, I, I meet Nick. I, knew, I know who Nick is. And I meet Coach Olive. And I just hear his big, raspy voice first. That was yeah. the first thing I heard. And I was like, 
wow, like this is real deal. Like this is how this is how it really feels. Walking like the Olive Garden, like that huge, like it's a huge gymnasium. I was like, wow, like this is really where it's gonna start. Overwhelming, or are you ready for it, or how was that? Uh, I'm not sure if I was 100 percent ready for it. Like, I'm still a small town kid, and this 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 building houses more people than my entire hometown. So you're like, okay, and I look at it, I'm like. Uh, uh, this is gonna be my place. Like that was that's that's when I really knew that I was gonna I was gonna for sure stay for Tory however long I have to. That's dope. And so you say like uh, you you were, you were just a big kid. You didn't really know how to play. So what what was that grind like? Because I see you now. Like I wouldn't have guessed that. Like the way you move, how big you are, how well you move, and that your ball skills and everything. I wouldn't have guessed that you're only like four four years into basketball. So what? How difficult was it to become a basketball player? Wasn't that difficult at all? Uh, it, it was it was a grind like. Uh, just Tori is just so good with skill development. We had so many coaches that just would help me as much as they physically could. That was a big thing. And Trent Suzuki, like I, I moved here August fourth. I started with Tori Pines August fifth. I started with Trent Suzuki August 9th. Like it was a week span before Trent Suzuki knew who I was, and I, I, I give a lot of that to him. Like he sort of helped me like figure out how to walk, you could say. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like I, I came here like one. 85 like I was skinny mm -hmm. I still think I'm super skinny and Trent still set, tells me that and he got me to like 200 in like two weeks like it wow. was it was like a big change that's why I really knew like this is gonna be this is how it's gonna be this it's gonna be a grind now right. yeah Trent Suzuki is super good at what he does and I've seen him and you know, we all know how good Boogie Boogie's always been but he wasn't always athletic like that like he Boogie could barely jump before he got over there with Trent now you see he's banging us the most that's like <laughs> Trent Suzuki's really good at it, what he does. And Trent, I want you on the show, bro. I want you on the show. I'm gonna reach out and let you know. We'll talk about it. I want you on the show, bro. Um, so you go to, you you get in school, you're with Tory Pines, you get with Trent, and now the grind's coming. So you're like, you're preparing. How did it feel preparing for such like a, um, like a, a big and like upcoming season? Like, what was that anticipation like? Cause like you said, in Colorado, it's, it's no big deal. Then you come down here and you know, like it's real out here. So what, were you nervous about that or? I knew Tory Pines was like a winning school, and I knew Brandon Angel. Like he, it was before he committed to Stanford, but I knew he had all those. Like he had like thirty offers like mm -hmm. a span of a week, so I knew who he was because of that. Okay. But I just knew there was a winning culture going around. I know CIF. We won CIF the year before that. I wasn't there, but I knew we won it. So I was like, okay, so there's gonna just be a winning mentality all the time through this like or mm -hmm. like even on like our big wins, like we blow a team up by like fifty. Like we still had that mentality that we should have won by more mm -hmm. or. Like we should have, we should have done something wrong. Like even if we had like a zero turnover game, like we did, we did something wrong still. So that was always the thing that went around. Is like we were already ready for anything to come up with us because we were just so like already in the winning mentality. Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. Not a lot of, and especially well, no, you played high level soccer though. But I was about to say, not not many people are ready for that. Like are ready for it and can deal with that. Like yo, we just played damn near a flawless game. Like you said, no turnover. Now the coach is like, nah, but we did this wrong and we did that wrong. I know as I've never coached at like a super, or I was an assistant coach on a team that went to the Elite Eight, but I've never like been a head coach on like a super duper high level. But any level that I've ever coached, I've always like held that stand. Like, if, like my point guard, if he had one one turnover, I'm like, but you had one though, bro. Like, let's clean that up for next time. And I know a lot of players that like, I, and then saying that to say like their parents will come later like oh so-and-so told me like he was really on about that one turnover like, he had a great game I'm like yeah he had a great game but I know he could play better you know what I'm saying and then an argument comes with the mom or like there's some type of some type of weird discourse but it, it's dope to hear that like somebody like you who's like new to it you're like nah this this is what the culture is and I'm with it and this, this is how we rock I like that bro I like that and so now you, you come over here you play your uh your sophomore year you say you're like five and five and two right yeah how was the, oh, no, this is your junior year right now. So what's it been, um, what's been the experience, like, I guess I should say, because you're not playing for Toy right now, like you said, what's been the experience of playing, playing prep ball? Because I have a few friends that, um, that played prep, and I know as far as San Diego goes, most kids, they, they pretty much just know about Balboa prep. So what's been your experience, like, playing prep ball, even though it's, you know, during a pandemic, what's your experience been like? Oh, prep ball is crazy. Like, you, you would never expect some people to be as athletic as they are. Like, every person, like, at least in the ground system, like, you have to, be able to dunk, you have to be able to do everything. So like when you go to a, like I had to go to a bubble for like nine days. It's like mentally preparing yourself for nine days to be situated with these people mm -hmm. and playing basketball seven of those nine days. And you have to play at the highest possible level because you're playing some commitment every other night. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're going against some like guy going to like Nebraska and USC or like the entire, like I know with a, like SoCal Academy, like 
you have to play an entire team that's going to go to play in the Big West. Like, they're like their first, like their front seven. Like, you, you're playing people that are all committed D1. Mm-hmm. So you have to keep that in your mind. Like, I'm about to play some of the best players that are in this country, and I have to do it like, every night. Like, you have to just prepare your body. That's the that's the big thing that's been with me. Mm-hmm. And what have you been doing to prepare? Or I guess, of what preparation did you do to get you ready for that? I guess I should say. Like it, it, it like with working out. Like I work out a ton now, but just getting mentally ready is really like a big thing. I feel like it's really underrated, like just getting your mind ready before stuff. Like just being in the moment. Like you don't really want to make those, like that big time decision sporadically because you're you're putting your body on the line really, playing seven of nine days. And so like I had to mentally prepare myself. Like I'm not really away from home like nine days out of the week. So like being away from that was difficult. But you just have to like put your mind to it. Like you have to be like, okay, this is this is how it is, and this is how I have to do it in college. And so if I want to go play college ball, I need to put my mind to this now. That's dope, man. That's dope, man. See, I'm glad you got, I'm glad I got you on the show. And talking about being uh, mentally prepared, what what are some of the things that you do to get mentally prepared for a game? Uh, like my pregame ritual, I always will. I'll start with like like seventies, eighties music. Like uh, okay. uh, I'll just feel it, and then give me some artists and some songs. Uh. I have the entire playlist. A lot of a, a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. I love Earth. Where? <laughs> I love my guy. Okay, okay. Um, that caught me off guard. <laughs> okay. And like Marvin Gaye, yeah, I listen to that stuff. My sister always listened to that growing up, so mm-hmm. I was I was just with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, then like I'll start like I'll start doing like the hype stuff. Like that's what everybody does. And then right before a game, I'll listen to classical music. It's just to calm your entire body down, so you're just ready for everything. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I like that. Like the other, is there anything other than music? You have like a pregame snack or like a, a prayer that you got to do. You got to call your mom. Is there anything else like a part of your ritual that you have to do before a game? Shout out Mott's fruit snacks. I eat like forty bags of that before the game. Like that's what that's my go-to thing. <laughs> what is it? We were playing a few days ago and we were like up by fifty, and I'm just sitting on the bench eating Mott's fruit snacks. Shout out, best fruit snacks in the world. <laughs> They got to give you the door. Hey, you and my son, you and my five year old son could kick it. That's all this dude do is just shit. any fruit snacks really, but we buy the moss. He loved it. That's that's the blue pack, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My son lo- loved the moss, uh the moss fruit snacks. That's crazy. I, I like the Welch's with myself. The straw the all strawberry packs from the Welch's. I mess with the moss because my son do it. I like the Welch's. Uh yeah, anything else to give? So it's just the fruit snacks and the music, huh? Fruit snacks and music, that's really it. That's what's up. And when when you're um what type of guy are you um because I, I, this, this just hit me right now. Like, think about, like, getting prepared for a game. I've been thinking about warm-ups. I love watching those, like, like whether it's Ball is Life or House of Highlights and show, like, oh, this is different hoopers in warm-ups. Like, oh, the Docker and this dude. What what hooper are you in warm-ups? See, like, I don't like shooting in warm-ups besides, like, free throws. Really? But, like, I'll, I'll, I'm usually, like, the dunker in warm-ups. I usually do that. Mm-hmm. Or I'll just take aggressive layups, like, if they <laughs> if they start getting on you about being on the rim. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. Like it's really difficult to just go do post moves and warm ups because everybody's just tossing up shots. So it's right. it's just like just trying to get my body, my legs a little bit loose. Hey, hey, CIF man, y'all gotta let these kids dunk in warm ups, man. Like when I was in high school, I I heard the it was something about intimidation. Is yeah, that, that, that what it is? Now? I, I still think that's what it is. That is I almost, I almost said something I shouldn't say. That is not a good reason to not let kids dunk in. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Intimidation. Like so, what happens when it, when you get the, like <laughs> we we played against a kid named Kenny Lawson. And uh, he went to Vista High School. Shout out to uh, Kenny Lawson. He went to Vista High School. Um, graduated in 06. He was on. He didn't make the game, but he was on the All American ballot. And he ended up going to Creighton. And I think he still plays pro. Like he's crazy good. Like crazy good. Dude dunked on us 13 times, bro. He was 6'10". Our tallest guy. The second time we played. The first time we played him, we had this big German dude on our team that was 6'8". This dude couldn't hold water if it was in a bucket. Like he couldn't nothing. Um, and then so the second time, but so this dude ended up leaving our team. The the big the 6'8 guy. So our, our tallest guy was 6'2". We playing against Kenny Lawson. He's yo, he's 6'10", and he's like huge. Like he's 6'10". He probably weighed like 270. Probably he was huge. Dumped on us 13 times, and I'm like, I don't see how if they would have let him dunk in warm ups, how that would have like. And we see how big. We know he can dunk. Like what sense does it make to not? I don't. I, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. I'm going on. Now. See, I, if y'all gotta let these kids dunk, man. Um, what was I about to say? See, I went off on that tangent, forgot where I was going next. But, um, so yeah, oh, that's what I was going to ask. Why don't you, 
You shoot jumpers though, right? Yeah, no, no, I shoot a lot. Why don't you like to shoot before the game? Like you don't want to get the flicker warmed up I, or nothing? See, I don't want to get hot in warm ups and then like cool off I and see. then not be able to shoot again. I like that's, that's my one fear is like getting super hot in warm ups uh -huh. and then you start doing some ridiculous stuff and then you get in the game and then just miss it every shot. I feel it. And see for me, I've always been the type, like even if I go, like, and I was the type that like, I want to always have a good shooting percentage no matter what it is. Obviously like most of it. And so for me, even when I played in adult leagues, like, being a grown man playing in adult leagues. If I know I had a game that night at seven, before I went to work, I go to the gym in the morning to get shots up. And I feel like if my shot is falling, I know I'm be hitting that game. You know what I'm saying? And then for me, like if I got in the game, I'm sorry, before the game started, when I got in warmups, if I shoot like two and it felt how it did early, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll be cash money. So I'm gonna keep shooting so I can make sure it's still, I don't lose it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's my mentality. Like I gotta keep shooting so it don't go away. And you the exact opposite. Like I don't wanna shoot, I want it to get going in the game. That's funny. That's why I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have thought that. And so, um, uh, you're in your junior year right now. What is, um, has there been, have you heard anything like from CIF or from your coach or, or your athletic director or anything about like the season or what's going to happen next? CIF is like a toss up right now. Mm -hmm. I know like with the vaccine coming out, it's looking a lot more like hopefully happening. Mm -hmm. I think it's still projected to hopefully go in March. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we have to get into like the yellow zone, like they created that like color tier list, mm -hmm. and that's just like the difficult part is, mm -hmm. like, it's like under like a hundred thousand people have to have mm -hmm. COVID, and so <laughs> it's just really just praying every night, hoping everybody can just right. get cured as quick as possible. See, I saw a few weeks ago as uh, uh, San Diego area parents parents organized the thing with like, like a protest where they're going out, let our kids play, they're holding signs, protesting, and everything. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, with like the not necessarily on the protest, but them like pressuring CIF to let kids play with the pandemic. On. I, 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 the pandemic's bad. Let me start with that. But I feel like with a lot of kids, like at least seniors, like this is their last opportunity to try to hopefully kind of scavenge for some sort of scholarship to go to school. Mm -hmm. And I know for like some like inner city kids, like that's like their last hope is trying to get a scholarship and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like a, just a difficult thing to do when you don't have a season at all. And mm -hmm. like, I know, I'm not gonna come after NCAA for this, but like, you're not allowed to have like, people like coaches go to games anymore either. And like, it's just slowed everything down. So the college coaches can't go to games. College coaches can't go to games. Like they have mm -hmm. to watch on Zoom. And it, 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 it made it really difficult, at least for the senior class. And it's really affecting the junior class now because your junior year is usually your big year. Like, and then school start offering your senior year. Mm -hmm. But your junior year, that year is so big for you because that just shows your growth and development and like how, who you like are gonna be your senior year and how you're gonna transfer into college. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's ruining, like at least my class, it hasn't really affected like a lot of the players on my team, but it's affecting a lot of my friends. Like Nick Herman, like he's a definite D1 bas basketball player, but D1 schools can't get eyes on him right now because of this like COVID. So that's, that's, that's my thing on it. That's been probably for me anyway, just like an onlooker. Um, that's been the biggest, like the most disheartening thing for me. Cause like I got in, like watching them far before I go off on another tangent. The, the most disheartening thing for me has been watching kids who are like on the cusp or like right there, miss out on opportunities. Like and I've said it on the show before, but I'll go ahead and say it again. I, I, everything that I try to do is, not try to do, everything that I do is in service to other people. And even with that, even more so when I'm, making a, a video for somebody or even inviting somebody up for an interview, anybody's welcome. No matter how big your name is, no matter how small your name is, anybody's welcome. But I try to make it a point to make videos for and give interviews to the kids who typically wouldn't have that. You know what I'm saying? And so when I watch like those kids who I would typically make videos do any old it, interviews for who are right there on the bubble right there and missing out on opportunities, that's the most disheartening thing to me. My first ever show I had, um, I had Bryson Stevens from Rancho Christian on the show. And I mean, his team was, you know, nationally ranked. And I think they even hit number one a couple. No, they didn't hit, no, they were like, I think they topped they hit with 11. They had a number one player in the yeah. country on their team. Um, and I was just talking to him about like how, how cool it was for him to, you know, be on a nationally ranked team and travel the country and like there's cameras and microphones at every game and all of that. And then for him, like right after the season was right when the pandemic hit. And for him, I remember he was saying like, his dad was like, yo, we got to, we gotta get on it because it's not gonna be a lot of stuff out here like you know what i mean and even for him who i like who like i said he played on a nationally ranked team so he had people looking at him but he wasn't he wasn't the guy like that like on his team you know what i'm saying and it was just 
like to hear him say like luckily it worked out for me who's somebody I feel like like you said like about your friend who's like no this is a D1 basketball player and he had to say luckily it worked out for me like that's uh, it, it makes me sad to even think about it it's so disheartening man like it I, I was about to mention some names but I, I don't want anybody to take it wrong like I'm disrespecting him or nothing like that so I'll just leave it right there um Let's see. What was what was your favorite? Uh, what's been your favorite basketball moment so far? Uh, I, I would probably say uh, like last week, like Tory, we played as like a, a sort of like a club team and like a tournament. We got to play Coronado Las Vegas. Like Jaden Hardy wasn't playing, but okay. there's a Michigan commit on there. Mm-hmm. Like every person on that team has a D1 offer. And Tory, like he, we didn't have Chris to start off the game. One of our other starters was in Mana. And then another one was also a mammoth. Like mm-hmm. we we didn't really have a full roster. We played go play Coronado, and we beat them like by one. And it was the most entertaining game of basketball I've ever been a part of. Mm-hmm. Chris Howell didn't play the last two minutes, so it was just all just it was just a big time war. Like everybody started getting into it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was it was probably the best basketball moment so far for me at least. Mm-hmm. Or or I put up the after we beat Saints and that they go to the CI finals. Mm-hmm. Coach Olive's reaction, like after we won that game, was it was crazy. It was it was it got everybody going in the locker room. I was so mad I couldn't go to that game. And I was um, I got contracted by a, by a company last season to, to cover all of Mikey's games. Um, and so I mean it was dope. You know Mikey was an exciting player to watch, but just like how do I say this like respectfully? Like you, as exciting as it is, and especially like when you know certain schools he's gonna play against, it's like. You know he's gonna go for like 30. You know he go have a million dunks, and it's like I've, I've seen it already. Like it's always exciting, but I've seen it already. And then to know that like y'all, you guys had a big game against the Saints. Like that was one of the games when I, I literally, no joke, contemplated calling the the guy in the company that I work for. Like, hey man, like look, I'm gonna find somebody to cover this game for me. I need to be at that Toy Pines game, but like, it was my first year working for that company. Let me do everything I'm supposed to do and not, you know, look crazy or nothing like that. But I, I was upset I couldn't make. It. I remember even texting full time. Like getting updates from him, like yo, what's going on? Like, how's that game going? I mean, I want to be at that game bad, man. It, 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 bad. it got crazy. I know one of my teammates, he got blocked by Chabuzo, but it, 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 it was fine because Chabuzo is just one of the best players that have come out of San Diego. Right, right, and he, right. he runs like he gets blocked. He's running on the baseline, going out of bounds, and the entire student section like groups around him and like starts like yelling at him. And I was like, wow, this is this is really crazy right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And like, I think. I think that game, Brandon, like there's like 24 seconds left, like five shots, seconds left on the shot clock. Gets a blow by, misses a dunk, but he tried to dunk on somebody with like five seconds left in the mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's a, it's a bold move. <laughs> man, it's, I, I, I used to live for those moments as a, as a player, man. Even in football, I played football as well. I played football and basketball in high school. I remember just like that was some of the best times, man. Like I remember at the at the end of at the end of the season, like at a banquet or just, actually, I'll give you this story in particular, talking about like bad, like crazy moments and just how much you enjoy it. We had this kid on our team, Nick Filan, he was a starter, hit threes, great defender, he was like slip a screen, like he was like a magician slip a screen, he was great. Um, and he was a, he, like I said, he did it all, but he was a he was a player that like when we needed, he wasn't our best shooter, but whenever we needed a big shot, you could count on Nick to knock it down. Um, and he was always like a joke, said, no, I'm like, this is senior year, and I hadn't met him freshman year, had been like, known him for four years at this point. Um, and it's, I think it was after the last game of the season. I think it was after the last game of the season. No, it was a home game, our last, anyway. It was at the end of the season, the season's over, um, and our coach is going around asking all the seniors, like, what they, you know, what they enjoyed most about the season. And him, when it got to him, and like I said, Nick's a jokester, like, cracking jokes all the time, and he, like, got emotional talking about, like, how much he's gonna miss these moments. And he was, I, I never forget, he was like, and just like when you hit a three and the crowd starts cheering and like he got like all choked up, face turned red and nobody had ever seen Nick like this before. You know what I'm saying? And just for me, I know I felt that way more so with football because I was a football player, but just like to hear, like to see that emotion on him and hear him talking about it, it, it just brings me back to all of those moments. And even even like hearing you tell the story about that. Like, Cause I, I remember going back to, uh, and now we came to hear from Otto, we want to hear you. I remember um, my, our, our last game of the season. We played against uh, we played against Hoover um, when they had J.D. Luster and Todd Doxon. Um, and my brother, my brother was the starting point guard. I remember he's taking the ball out. You you played at Hoover before? Uh, not this. I think we were supposed to play this year, but this year. They they only have one side of bleachers. There's like the where you sit like 
the, the, the bench, and you like look across the court, and like the first section of bleachers is for the home, and then there's like, like a floor, and then another rise of this come like separate. It's like, but it's all on the same side. And yeah, as, as an away player, all your fans are like, they're there, but they're up, and they're kind of pushed back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Their fans are right there. My brother's taking the ball out. A kid like tugged on his jersey, like untucked his jersey, started like tugging on his shorts, like up, yelling. And I remember just thinking like, they better not touch my brother. And then number, but this is such, this is dope. Like I love, anyway, I, I can go on and on about that. Um, and so, you've been getting crazy, uh, not crazy offers, you've been getting a lot of offers lately, man. That, that was one of the things, like I said, I've been following you, but that was like maybe what really want uh, to bring you on the show and just talk about like, what this experience has been like that for you. So what was the, what was the first offer that came? Oh, I got Brian like the first night, like that, College coaches were allowed to call me because going to junior, like you're not allowed to talk to colleges, sophomore, freshman year. So like going, it's the day you turn technically into a junior, mm -hmm. they're allowed to call you. Mm -hmm. I got one exactly at 12 p.m. from Brian, and that was that was crazy. I was I was just walking around my house. I was back in Colorado. I was with my dad. I wasn't really expecting anything that night. Mm -hmm. And like I'm eating like a piece of pizza, and I just see like they called me, and I was like, oh, okay. Like that that was the crazy. Was it thing. like? I was I was I was surprised. Like I was freaking out a little bit. I didn't really like think about it <laughs> until the next day because it was so late. But mm -hmm. like that that was crazy. And then with Hawaii, so Hawaii is like three hours back from like San Diego time or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I knew they were gonna call me that night. I didn't know they were gonna offer me. But I was talking to the head coach. I, mm -hmm. I was talking. He was like, "I'll call you later." Mm -hmm. And so I'm laying down in bed. It's like 11:30. I'm like, "Oh, so I'll just call him tomorrow." I'm like, "You'll call me tomorrow." And 11.30, like, I'm about, I'm resting my eyes. There's, like, the phone next to me. Like, I'm listening to, like, some sort of podcast. And I, I just hear the buzz. I'm like, ah. Oh. I pick it up. I was a coach of Hawaii. I get up. I, well, I pace around my house when, I, when I'm talking to college coaches. It just makes me feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. And, like, he told me I'm up. And, like, I get off it. Like, I mute myself. I scream a little bit. My mom comes running out of my room because it's 12 o'clock now. And she's like, are you okay? Are you okay? I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll talk to him in a second, and I was like, I just talked to him for a little bit about like Disney movies, and then my mom and I just start freaking out around the house, just yelling, jumping around, because I was a, like a school that I I really like, I really like Hawaii, so it was that was crazy, and UCSB just came out of nowhere. I was just talking to the head coach for the first time, and it it, it really surprised me out of nowhere, and uh, my friend Jacob Barnaby also got the same offer that day, so it was sort of like we just talked about it a little bit, and how. Um, it was like, just cool to both get off on the same day from the same right. school. Right, that would be dope. Too. I mean, after, obviously you got that decision coming much later. That would be dope to go to, you know, get a scholarship with your buddy and go to the same school. You know, yeah. That would be, be dope. And so for me, like, I don't, like, have any, like, regrets or reason. I'm not, I, a few regrets, but I don't, like, ho like, hold on to anything from my playing days. But I didn't, I wasn't, I got, like, recruited by a couple, like, JCs at the end of my senior year when I really started, like, doing well on the field. But I wasn't, like, no heavy recruit like no D1s or even D3s, NAIAs, nothing, just, just, just JUCOs come and talk to me, you know what I'm saying? And so for me, um, and even actually, furthermore, even on my football team, there was only one person to even get a Division One letter, he was an offensive lineman. We had like, our quarterback was really good, he got a bunch of D2 stuff, all our skill positions, people got offers, but only our offensive lineman, uh, Matt Cedillo, shout out Matt Cedillo, he went to, uh, he went to Washington Huskies. He went, to, he went to play off of the line on the full scholarship. And so, and I remember like the coaches bringing him his letters and coming and talking to him. And because he's such a great guy and he knew he was the only one getting that type of love and type of attention, he never like went crazy about it in front of us anyway, because I felt like he was just trying to be a nice guy. Like nobody else is getting these. I'm not, I'm excited, but I'm not gonna rub it in anybody's face. I'm gonna, you know, be humble about it. You know what I'm saying? But I was like a friend of his, so I could, I knew what he was doing, and then I I could see him later on, like really get juiced and excited about it. You know what I'm saying? And so now, me, you know, being a media guy and being a camera guy, I, you know, and even doing this show now, when I hear about different people like going through the process, it takes me back to like thinking about how how excited Matt was. You know what I'm saying? And so I just I just want to talk to people because I know, like I said, I know for you who is somebody like you've been a good player for a while. But now all this attention is just like, I don't want to say out of nowhere because you put the work in, but it's all like at once and yeah, it wasn't yeah, there yeah. before. You know, and I can imagine it could be either like, not either, probably all of these like exciting, maybe a little like uh, nerve wracking and possibly difficult to deal with. So I definitely want to have you on the show just to talk about it a little bit. What's it been, um, have, have you talked to your mom about like any of these schools and like, like talked about what's the best out of these schools or you're just like kind of waiting for more offers? Uh, I, I'm, 
I'm, I'm waiting. I'm going to wait till my senior year to really like make my decision to commit and like sign. It will probably be close to signing day when I probably commit. But I'm button. You are a junior still. I'm button. Okay. <laughs> and so like, it. I don't. I don't really talk to my mom about college that much. But the thing about it is like, I could play anywhere. Like I grew up in the Midwest, so I could go play in the Midwest or on the West Coast. I love California. I love. I love Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. and the East Coast. I always like. I always didn't, like wanted to grow up on the East Coast when I was little. In the South, I just loved really the South. Really like that? I don't really know. I was a big Kevin Garnett fan growing up. So like Boston, Boston was just like my place. Like that's always where I felt like mm -hmm. I would live one day. That was always something funny. That's interesting. But I was the biggest. Actually, like bro, the reason why I wear rubber bands on my wrist to this day is because of Kevin Garnett. There might have been people doing it before him, but I don't. I don't remember anybody doing it before him. I remember he like had a. And it wasn't like a, because like, I mean, I got a baller band too, but it wasn't a baller band. It was just a regular rubber band like that'd be on a newspaper. I remember saying like, oh, that's kind of cool. And it looked like a bracelet. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I literally, I wasn't even really playing ball. I was playing ball. But anyway, because of Kevin Garnett, that's why I started wearing a rubber band on my wrist, literally. And it's funny because, like I told you, I'm a Lakers fan. And I was, Kevin Garnett was my favorite player when he played for the Timberwolves. When he was winning league MVPs and wearing number 21 for the Timberwolves. And then him being my favorite player and then moving to Boston, me being a Laker fan, I'm like, oh, come on, KG. <laughs> and I remember even, bro, like, when when everybody was like, anything is possible, everybody remembers that. But I remember even, um, like, being like being upset, being a Lakers fan, like, watching him ball us up. And the way he was doing it, like, he was, like, cussing our team out, talking trash. I'm like, come on, KG, don't do us like that. And I remember even, like, like, hating on him because he's beating my team. But I remember, like, I remember rather watching him in that post game interview and being that excited. I was like, I'm just happy for KG, man. I can't even be mad at him, bro. He had to grind it out, do what he had to do to get a ring, and he finally got one. Who's who's your favorite player now? Probably now, uh, Nikola Jokic. He's 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 the best player in the league, in my opinion. Right? Really? He he just does everything well, and mm -hmm. he's like seven foot one. Like mm -hmm. like he does everything. Like he hit that buzzer beater last time to go into overtime. Mm -hmm. Like that was crazy. Mm -hmm. I would never expect him like that. Like you would never expect to see that anymore. Like some seven foot one dude take the ball up the court, shoot a el like an elbow jumper, mm -hmm. fading away right. and hitting it. And mm -hmm. like it, 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 like growing up in Colorado, that was another thing. Like I met him. On my school used to actually sing the national anthem for Denver sometimes, and so like we would get there super early and we would like get to see him warm up. And I always saw him warm up, and I always I would always yell his name. And I would go over to like the autograph section and I would like start yelling at him just. Do stuff. He's just a funny dude. Like he's definitely my favorite player. That's dope. That's dope, man. I'm gonna ask you two questions. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same question, just in different on different levels. I'm gonna ask you to put together a starting five. Uh, I head back here. NBA starting five, and then a San Diego high school basketball player starting five. Starting five, NBA. Uh, point guard. Oh, I'll go to that last. Shooting guard. Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal is so underrated, and I don't like how people sleep on him. Like he's averaging 35. And his teams have lost one, one in 12. Like just put him on a good team for once, please. Right, right, right. Uh, Kevin Durant, best, one of the best players mm -hmm. ever in my opinion. Absolutely. LeBron, the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, Jokic, and then I would, I, I don't want to like I don't like any of the point guards in the league right now. That's the big thing with me. Is like I don't feel like any of the point guards are really like, like, like incredible. So I put like Jalen Brown there or something like that. Like, Interesting. Or like probably like Brown on the one or something. We were talking about Torrey Pines and different players on your team. I meant to ask you this. We're going to get to you San Diego start five. I'm not going to forget. Um, but I wanted to ask you just because I love his game so much and I want to have him on the show. How is it playing with Chris Howe? Oh, he is the nicest dude in the world. And he knows so much about basketball. Like he can see every little thing. Like he is the one of the best floor generals I've ever seen. And then I saw him a few days ago. He was playing against Hillcrest with his uh, like team Allen, and he was a uh, he was guarding Mike Foster, like number eight kid in his class. Mm -hmm. And like Chris, Chris was locking him up. Like Chris is like a six six point guard. He's guarding some six nine mm -hmm. two fifty guy, and he's able to play defense. He can guard one through five. He's gonna do great at same man. He's he's definitely like a like he should be more seen as like a like a, as a point guard to me that just plays lockdown defense. And his shots gotten so much better over yeah. over the year. Mm -hmm. like this this pandemic has helped him so much. Like people, oh, okay, I haven't even seen him since. Okay, it's 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 his shots gotten really good. He shoots mid range jump shots now. He hit a buzzer beater against Arenado for us to win in that Coronado game. He's he's good. He's good. He's real deal. That's scary. He's a senior, right? Yeah. yeah so we have to see 
I was really excited to watch him play. I don't know if you saw my like, my, my, my starting five that I I, yeah, I, my saw that. That I thought we get Santa Claus player of the year. I, 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 I wanted to watch him play so bad, man. I mean, of course, the guys that like that went crazy last year, but specifically him and, um, and AJ from San Diego High. I was, and Jerry, all of them, all five of them, really. I can't even front, all five of them, really. I was really looking forward to seeing Chris, but because I was, I was gonna say more so Chris, though, just because of what you said about him, like the type of point guard he is and the floor general that he is, man. It's, that dude sees everything, bro, like, and I love, I love watching, I mean, I've always been a point guard, so I'm sure, but I love watching point guards that are super, like, just, talented like with their passing that way bro like it's, it's it's in my opinion there's nothing better to watch in sports than a point guard like a like a flawless i guess nobody's flawless but a, a floor general like yeah that. like something like tom brady like a quarterback that's always gonna drop it in the bread basket like but for me a point guard because it's like they see football it stops every so often so it's like you know what i'm saying you get to regroup and set up but basketball is always moving I love being able, like, I've seen Chris do it uh, plenty of times. I love seeing, like, a point guard, like, look back and, like, see where everybody's running and then get the outlet and then just turn and chuck it, like, for a dime. That's, like, one of my favorite things of watching Chris is I can go on and on about Chris. Chris, come holler at me on the show, man. Come talk to me, bro. Um, so, uh, damn, where was we at before that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. San Diego starting five. There we go. Okay, so I'll, I'll do one with me and I'll do one without me. Okay, I like that. Uh, I'll, I'll start without me. I'll go. Nick Herman, he is so underrated. He's he's my best friend too, but he is for sure a D1 basketball player. He'll he'll end up there somehow. He works his butt off. Uh, at the two, okay, that's difficult here. Uh, um, between two people here, it would be AJ. AJ is one of the best players in San Diego, and Devin Arlington. Devin Arlington, he's on my club team. He's a pure scorer. He scores. He, he can get to the bucket. Like I, I've played with him. He's nearly dropped forty like four different times. I saw him play for the first time when he was in eighth grade at Christian High School at a combine. I think at like a showcase. I don't know what it was. Something at Christian High School. And I had never seen him play before. I had only heard his name, but I remember like finally seeing him. Like, Yo, this kid can play. His dad over there, loud, going crazy. You know, so I mess with that. A lot of people like have stuff to say about dads like that, I would be that type of dad. I would be out there going hard, just like that. I would be another LeVar Ball. I promise you I would be. So go ahead, my bad. I mean, cut Yeah, no, no, yeah. So I'd, I'd probably put Devin because I've just played with him more than AJ. Mm -hmm. uh, three spot. Who's it? Uh, it would be between, like, I could put either of these guys in Trevin Martin or Obina because just Obina's. Obina. Right, He's right, good. right. But Trevin Martin, I've watched him play all summer because I was, I was in the same organization as him. I spent a lot of time with him. Kid is in athlete he 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 dunks a lot and he can run the floor he plays great defense i saw him guard like who was it oh no fade ball they played fade ball they beat him by 60 and he was guarding fade ball the entire time wow. like a top five recruit like it, 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 it he's really good so between one i'll probably put trev in there just because game okay. point uh four spot four spot chris howell for sure like you can i could have put him anywhere on here and he would have yeah. done perfectly fine mm -hmm. and then Centers, uh, probably Dylan Will Height. Uh, I put Martin Gummo on there, but Martin Gummo is not really known. Mm -hmm. But he was on my AAU team. He's like six eleven, dunks everything. He's a he's a he's an athlete. Just he's really young too. But I'll put Dylan there because I know Dylan from the like he, he plays on the grind session now with BFL Kings, and he was also on my like game point organization. And then sort of the same team uh, with me. I would put Devin. For sure, I'll put AJ with me. AJ is just one of the other great passers. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it would be fun to play with Obina, uh, Chris. I mean, nice. Hey, hey, two good fives, man. Can't go wrong. Both of those teams win the win CIF championship. Plus some good teams, man. Let me see if I could. Um, what's um, what would be like your dream? Like, like for me, I don't know. I won't get into mine yet. This is your. What, what would be like your dream? Like, like like basketball scenario like one game like a perfect game for you would, would, would look like and feel like what oh that's that's crazy there has to be a, you have to at least dunk on somebody that's the most humiliating okay. thing like you can do as a human it's like uh -huh. get dunked on like I feel like that has to happen at least one time. I feel like um, it has to be a close game it has to be like it probably would be the Del Mar Heights rivalry like Tory versus Cathedral that's just like mm -hmm. that game becomes a war no matter who the teams are it could be the worst team in 
San Diego was the best team in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Or it could be the LCC tour again, one of those two. And definitely just a right hand hook shot for game, that would be it. I, right. I, I could score four points. It could be four points, a body and a right hand hook shot for a win and I would be perfectly good time. I was gonna ask you two about your numbers. <laughs> I don't even care about the numbers, okay. I like that, I like that. For me, um, uh, my, mine was, but mine was football though. Mine was football though, but it has changed to basketball because I'm way more about, I don't even watch football anymore really to be honest. I'm watching the Super Bowl though. My brother got me back on football, I'm watching the Super Bowl. Um, for me, my, I think my dream basketball scenario would be, um, I gotta have numbers in there though, bro. I'm not, I'm not like you, I'm a little vain. But I gotta, I want, I'd like to have like, between like 19 and like 23 points, like eight assists, five boards, a couple steals, I need to, I need this, I've never dunked on it, on anybody on a 10 foot court. I've only dunked on a 10 foot court three times. And it was like, I didn't even dribble, I had to run the whole time. <laughs> um, so definitely not dunking on anybody, but for me, I need a, um, you know what the UTEP two step is? Maybe, I, I, I might see it before. <laughs> it's just when you, you put it between your legs and you just snatch it right back. And, but you're super low to the ground. What Tim Hardaway used to always Oh, like, super Hardaway, low to the ground. Oh, yeah, that moves. I need one of those. Yank it across and then hit a three in somebody's face. It ain't got to be for game or nothing like that. But I need, I need one of them. I've done it before, like in pickup and stuff like that. But like in an actual game with somebody on you playing their best defense, and you just shake them and hit the three. That's what I would need for mine. That's what I would need for mine. I think that was all I got for you, bro. Anything, anything you want to uh, shout out? Anything you want to talk about or anything like that? Uh, shout out Trent Suzuki. Shout out my mom. She drove me here today. Thank okay. you. Uh, and then shout out Mott. Best. <laughs> Fruit snack in the game. <laughs> and see, I should I should have asked you what else. Well, I guess it's not making me eat fruit snacks on camera. I always ask my guests like, do you need like, what do you want to drink? You said big. I ain't have time to stop and grab one. Or you said a big water guy. I'm gonna start asking like, yo, you need some snacks or something? This dude said the mods. I'm gonna make sure I, uh, I'm gonna start asking about the snacks and stuff like that. But yeah, shout out Trent Suzuki, man. Trent, like I said, I want you on the show, bro. For real, I want you on the show. Also, uh, is this is this one still? Shout out to my guy, uh, my guy Braxton Smith, my guy Braxton at uh, KRS Global. Thank you for the dope hat, bro. I'm, I'm going to grab some more merch. Y'all check out the uh, KRSN Radio uh, podcast. Next episode will be dropping sometime next week. Two episodes deep on both the Flix Media Network and on KRSN Global's YouTube channel. Uh, shout out my guy Brandon at Trill Consciousness, man. Y'all, he, keep, he keep me. Y'all see me. I got, in Trill, I got on Trill Consciousness clothes almost every show, man. This dude keep me super fresh. I pay. I want to say he keeps me. I pay for my clothes. I support business. Like that. But thank you for keeping me fresh. I appreciate y'all. And everybody that's been um been a continued supporter of On the Mic with Michael Flix, I appreciate you, man. Anybody that asks about the show and where the show has been, I appreciate you, man. It means a lot. I'm gonna try to keep it consistent. I'm getting faster with my edits, even though I'm getting more projects, but I'm gonna get it to the point where I'm making sure I'm coming in here every Saturday and doing the show every Saturday, man. So please keep rocking me. I appreciate y'all, man. It's been another episode of On the Mic with Michael Flix. We out.